All right, so get ready to go on a deep dive into something I've been uh, thinking about. The psychology behind design, you know, it really impacts us without us even realizing it. Like, how about fintech? How does design play into the digital products we use every day? Well, you found some really interesting research on this. I did. This article, Purpose Driven Fintech Design, it really opened my eyes. Yeah, it's a good one. Because haven't we all felt that frustration? Like trying to find something on a website that's just so clunky or even in a store that's laid out like a maze. And this article, it actually explains the psychology behind those experiences, which I just found fascinating. It gets really interesting when you start to understand this concept they talk about, the, uh, what is it, the seeking system. The seeking system. Yeah, it's basically this primal drive we all have in our brains to search for things we need. It all goes back to, you know, our early ancestors. Okay, I'm intrigued. So how does that work exactly? Well, think about it. Our ancestors, they were constantly searching for essential things food, shelter, you know, even a mate, things they needed to survive. And when they found those things, their brains would reward them with a hit of dopamine, that feel-good chemical. And even today, that same system is still running in the background, whether we realize it or not. So even when I'm like, you know, hunting down a bargain online or yeah. trying to figure out a new fintech app, it's that same uh, that same system at play. That's right. It's like my inner caveman celebrating a successful hunt or something. Yeah, exactly. And you know what's interesting is the article makes this point that businesses that really understand this this seeking system and design their products around it, those are the businesses that are going to come out on top. That makes sense. But how do you actually go about designing something around a system that we're not even aware of most of the time? Like, how does that even work? Well, the author kicks things off with a couple of anecdotes. And, you know, I think they really illustrate this point perfectly. So, so get this. The author's in a supermarket. Right. Totally stocked full of stuff, and he can't find yeast. Oh, I've had that. Yeast for bread. Anywhere. Oh, I've totally been there. It's so frustrating. Right. And then another time, they're trying to order sushi online, and the website's so bad they almost give up. Ugh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm ready to buy, I'm ready to spend money, but the process is just so painful, I almost yeah. give up. It's happened to me with clothes before, I put them in the cart, and then the checkout is too much of a hassle. Exactly. And that's the thing. I mean, we've all been there ready to spend our hard-earned money, but the experience is so frustrating. It's yeah. just a missed opportunity for these businesses. Right. It's true. They think that we, uh, they think that if we want something bad enough, we'll just put up with any kind of, I don't know, a terrible design or frustrating process to get it. But especially these days with instant gratification and everything, you know, million options. I don't know if that's true anymore. It's just not the case, right? Right. And that's where understanding this seeking system really comes in. Businesses need to design these experiences that make us feel like we're actually winning. Mm. Like like we're we're on that primal hunt and we've succeeded. Right. Even if it's just, I don't know, a new pair of shoes or a loan. Interesting. So wait, are you saying supermarkets are like secretly manipulating our brains with this seeking system? Okay. Because uh, I know I've definitely fallen prey to those impulse buys. Yeah. You know when they put the candy bars right there at the checkout line? Well, the article actually talks about supermarkets, how they've really kind of mastered this whole seeking system thing. And we don't even realize it. Think about it. When you go to the grocery store, what's something you always need? Milk. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Every single time. And those are almost always located where? The back of the store. So you have to walk so, past. All the way in the back. The bakery section. Yep. With the cookies. <laughs> I always they know what they're doing. somehow end up with in my basket. <laughs> but how does this apply to like, you know, the digital world, especially with fintech? That's what I'm really curious about. Well, it's the same principle. It's about anticipation. Mm -hmm. It's about guidance. So let's say you're designing a loan app. Right. Instead of hitting the user with a bunch of like company news or just a cluttered interface, you streamline it. You put the loan options front and center. OK. The interest rates. Yeah. Maybe a loan calculator. So you're not making me hunt around for the apply now button. Exactly. You're guiding them. You're making it clear. So it's like the app is rolling out the red carpet and saying, this is what you need. This is where you go to get it. Exactly. And this can apply to any digital product, really. That's what the article emphasizes. This whole idea of aligning your design with the user's seeking behavior. It's got to feel intuitive almost subconscious okay like the app or website it just knows but it can't just be about 
like you know appealing to my my inner caveman right I yeah mean, there's got to be a balance absolutely with it. yeah it, the article talks about that it's not enough to just like tap into that seeking system you have to balance it with all these other really important factors like what so they actually outline three pillars of effective design okay user needs business goals and then technological capabilities okay break that down for me so we've got the user who's on a mission to find something right, right. whether it's yeast in the supermarket yep or the best loan rate in a fintech app right and then you've got the business okay and they have their own goals to sell you stuff they want to they want to sell their products or services make a profit right? right and then of course you have the technology itself okay but website the app whatever platform is connecting the user and the business so it's like a three-legged stool if one leg is wonky the whole thing falls apart. That's a great way to yeah, put it. Well, yeah. And that's why this whole seeking system idea is so important. You understand that, that underlying drive in your users. And you can design these really great experiences that actually meet their needs, but also achieve your business goals at the same time. And that's like the magic formula, right? When yeah. you can make it feel intuitive and enjoyable for the user and the business actually sees results because you know people are finding what they need they're making purchases they're taking action whatever it might be exactly it's a win win it's wild isn't it how we can draw a line from like the placement of milk in a supermarket all the way to the design of a loan app and it's all because of these primal instincts it really is and what's interesting to me is how much further we could take this what do you mean well if we can apply these design principles to things like apps and supermarkets yeah what about our relationships, our personal goals, even just the way we communicate every day? I like where you're going with this. Think about it. What if we put more thought into how we design our interactions, not just with technology, but with people? Like we could all use a little bit of purpose-driven design in our, in our everyday lives. Exactly. Imagine if we were all a bit more intentional about making it easier for people to connect with us, you know, to feel understood, to feel that sense of reward in their interactions. Hmm. Okay. I'm with you. Wow. This deep dive, it's really got me thinking about things in a whole new light. So for our listeners out there, especially those who are interested in fintech, what's the big takeaway for them? What should they be looking for or thinking about when they're using these apps and websites? I think the key is to be more aware of how things are designed, but not just visually. Think about the functionality too. Does it make sense? Does it feel intuitive? Or are you stuck like hunting around for what you need? And if it's a struggle, well, chances are they haven't quite mastered that seeking system that we've been talking about. But if it feels easy, if they make it easy for you to find what you need and accomplish your goals, well, then it's a win-win, right? You're happy, they're happy. Exactly. And it all goes back to understanding that primal drive, that desire for us to seek out what we need and be rewarded for it. It's fascinating stuff. Absolutely fascinating. And what's amazing is that it's happening all around us. We just don't always realize it. Well, maybe now you will. You'll start to see these seeking systems everywhere. I'll be the one in the supermarket, you know, with my notebook analyzing the cereal aisle. Just don't blame me when your shopping cart is full of impulse buys. Oh, it's inevitable. <laughs> it's inevitable. Well, this has been a great conversation. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking this deep dive with me. My pleasure. It's been fun. And to everyone listening, thanks for joining us. We hope you learned something new today and maybe even had a few aha moments of your own. And who knows, maybe this will inspire you to go out and design some pretty amazing experiences yourself in business, in life, wherever you see an opportunity. I love that. Until next time.